Mr. Speaker, the, the issue I have, I'll go back a, a couple steps. There was an article in the Providence Journal recently about how many farmers are, are extremely concerned about the Food Safety Modernization Act of 2011. I think there's approximately 600 pages of federal regulations that are being brought into effect when the Food Safety Modernization Act goes into effect in 2018. Uh, Mr. Wright from the Farm Bureau said that, I quote, it could just about eliminate agriculture in Rhode Island. And some examples are that farmers could be fined for failing to quarantine a field after a deer has walked through it and left a little manure, or for failing to keep records for three years about how to wash your hands training that each farm worker has received. Uh, there's mandatory tests for E. coli in ponds. Uh, if the levels aren't correct, you can't harvest for multiple days. Um, Sandy Barden uh, was quoted in the article. She's from the family or the Barden Family Orchard Farm in North Situate in Gloucester. And she has, I think, one of those pick your own farms, pick your own food farms. And they can't have kids if they have a cold picking fruit. So the point is that this is just more federal control over our state. It's added federal bureaucracy. I don't think that any state department should be enforcing these federal regulations. If the federal government wants to pass foolish regulations to regulate our farmers, let them spend their own money and send their own inspectors to the state of Rhode Island to enforce them. They should not be co-opting our state officials to do that work for them, especially with such ridiculous regulations that they're passing. I agree that if we had to choose between the Department of Health and the Department of Environmental Management. I'd rather have DEM enforcing these regulations, but the point is we shouldn't be mandating any state department enforce these regula federal regulations. They're onerous. I question whether the federal government even has a constitutional authority to pass this stuff, and I think we should just say, you want these regulations, you come here and enforce them. You're not going to commandeer our state officials. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Represent Chairwoman Ruggiero. Thank you, Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, uh, Leader Filippi is correct. There is a federal law, and unfortunately, we can't change that. And that's not what this bill does, and that was a wonderful article that he quoted in Providence Journal two days ago. But we worked with the farmers to put this law in because statutorily we have to do something with the federal law coming down the pike next year. And the farmers want good agricultural practices. They've been doing it for 13 years voluntarily because they want food to be safe. FISMA came out of the spinach scare back in uh, California and the cantaloupe problems in Colorado a few, few years ago where farmers across the country were losing millions and millions of dollars. In Rhode Island, their food won't be bought by stores if they don't follow GAP. And quite honestly, the farmers say DEM and the Division of Agriculture is where they want to work. So that's what this bill is doing, working with the farmers. And believe me, there's a big difference between food agriculture, at least I learned this, um, which is what an apple is, versus agriculture process, which is applesauce. And if you're making applesauce, then DOH does have to come in and inspect. But this is talking about fruits, vegetables. It's what the farmers want, and that's why we've put the bill in this way for them. So I ask for your support. Thank you. Whip Filippi. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I really enjoy these debates because I think they go to the fundamental construct of our separate sovereign system of government in the United States. Our United States Supreme Court has held multiple times that even where a federal act is passed pursuant to the United States Constitution, where the federal government has the constitutional right to make a law, there is no constitutional right on the federal government to co-opt our states to enforce it. It's called the anti-commandeering doctrine. It goes back, I think, to some of the earliest Supreme Court cases. It's been ratified in Prince v. Arizona about mandatory gun background checks. It was, again, uh, used in the Obamacare decision, uh, the Affordable Care Act decision in front of the Supreme Court. The, the federal government cannot force us to enforce federal law. Basic principle of federalism in this country. I am very skeptical about passing a law requiring the DEM to enforce federal 
regulations under the Food Safety Modernization Act. I, we don't have to, and when you look at the regulations, we shouldn't. We always have the choice as to whether to work with the federal government. Sometimes we should say, no, thank you. This is one of those times. Let them stop passing such ridiculous regulations, and then we can say, you know what, you can use our agents of the state to enforce this federal law. At this point, the Food Safety Modernization Act doesn't make sense. I do not want to pass a law where our state agents are co-opted to enforce it when we have no requirement to do so under our constitutional system of government. Thank you.